Hello everyone, uh, I am Vidushi Patel, a PhD student at UWA, Brian's my supervisor. Today I will be talking about an agent based model of migratory beekeeping in Western Australia. So just to give a quick uh, overview, the bee industry in Western Australia is basically um, growing very rapidly, but uh, resources uh, basically the beekeepers target, they, uh, they are mostly located in the southwest corner of the, of the state and beekeepers follow migratory patterns to uh, f uh, chase flowering events that occur over the year and different species also contribute to those migratory uh, patterns. So this is part of uh, one of the paper that we uh, recently published and it is um, based on the beekeepers interviews and um, data collected from that. So with that uh, migratory patterns, beekeepers uh, f uh, create certain special patterns when they move across uh, the landscape. So uh, and they um, they, there are some uh, different pressures that are uh, reported during that uh, interview process and most of them are like majority you can see here as burning, uh, burning of resources, availability and access to sites and climate change and land cover change. So if we see that we can see that um, these pressures are mainly affecting the forage resources itself and then uh, the effects get translated because everything is connected and they, uh, their livelihood is totally dependent on the forage resource and the condition of the forage resources. So we just try to investigate how does the change in this forage resources fit any pressure that, re that can reflect in the spatial patterns of how they migrate around the landscape. Few methods we took here. So in an agent based model we have three elements, an agent that can be a human, can be animals, can be um, organization, company, institution, anything can be represented and then environment, it can be spatial environment, network environment mm, or there are a bunch of decision rules or say interaction rules that based on that agents can interact with each other or interact with the environment. So one of the major uh, main important use of agent based model is that it can co incorporate local level interactions and um, explain you how the system um, system level results emerge from those local interactions. That is what we want to see here for beekeepers uh, interactions with the forage locations. So um, there are a bunch of different uh, ways we collected data it, because it is very data savvy. So we, uh, we did um, interviews and listed out a few uh, target species that they target. We listed out 30 target species that beekeepers target. Then we did uh, participatory mapping exercise with them using uh, their every uh, site coordinates uh, and understanding that which, uh, which sites they use, what species they target on each of the sites and then what month of the year that target, uh, they target those sites. So that points of data and then we downloaded some uh, for those 30 species we downloaded uh, point locations from Atlas of Living Australia and then most of those uh, coordinates and run into uh, run into the model um, species distribution model. So we we com uh, compiled 30 species distribution model uh, using current uh, bioclimatic variables as well as future bioclimatic variables and then created two different scenarios that uh, baseline and future scenario just to see that how change in forage availability relative to climate may impact their, uh, their spatial pattern over the time. Um, then we combine all those 30 species based on their for flowering, uh, flowering months they flower using python and uh, then put it as a input layer in, uh, in agent based model for, for the applying decision moves. So first let me just give you a quick overview. This is a staked STM species distribution model for all the 30 species and which shows that um, for each month how, what change you can see here. So we can see here that most of the change uh, in the species occurs in here in the eastern side. So the um, green portion is where, the, where you can see um, flowering species uh, occurring in individual months and based on the decisions beekeepers move their hives to different locations and and the output we are trying to see is that how uh, for each run how far they want to travel and how it affects the travel distance and also how it changes um, the harvest locations. Thank you. <laughs>